Avenue to help Frozen Over with head coach Rex Powers. Coach, how are you doing today? Doing good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. We got a lot of food coming our way, but first let's break down your win against Nate exhibition game. Uh, just talk to me about uh, what went on in that game. You know, I, I, I think that, uh, okay, sorry, I think that uh, um, it was good. You know, I was really happy with the effort. I, it, you know, we said to uh, a lot of people after the game and, and, and made people aware that the rules in NCAA hockey are a little squirrely. Leading into that game for about the month that we had to work with our guys, we could only work with them for two hours a week on the ice. And, and it was Nate's, I think, eighth game of the year. So uh, we didn't really know what to expect. But I, I think uh, I think uh, the end result was what we wanted. Obviously, we wanted to get out with a win and some positive things to draw upon and, and no injuries, and we did that. So a big thing for you guys in that game, you know, you put up 40 shots against that team. And two years ago, you know, when you guys first made the transition, you would always preach how, you know, you just didn't have those guys to get those shots on net. You know, you guys wouldn't be putting a lot of uh, – a lot of games we've been putting more than 20 shots up on net, but you said, give us time, give us time. You finally see that. Is that something uh, that hockey fans can expect to see all season as a team that's going to put 30 plus, shots up, uh, 30 plus shots up per game? Well, it's one of our measurements. We, we want to we wanna always get over 30 and give up less than 30. Um, you know, so, so we, we want to put a lot of pucks on net. I mean, I think every team does. I think as we grow as a program, um, we're going to get better and better every year, you know, and you can see it this year. We're a lot deeper. There's not a, a huge difference between our first and third and fourth lines. Um, but I think most importantly, we have really good leadership. And when you establish leadership and a culture and uh, a complete buy-in from your entire locker room, that's when things start to really uh, change uh, for your organization or your team or whatever you're, you're doing. And, um, and that's what we have. We have great leadership that that uh, holds our guys accountable and, and gets them to buy in with everything that we're trying to do. Now the goaltenders the other night, one uh, goal allowed um, between the two of them. They each got pretty much equal playing time. Um, what, what can you speak as far as their performance between the five? Uh, I was really happy with both Joey and, and Ryland. They, they looked sharp. Um, Joey made a few big saves really early. We, we knew we'd come out with a little, little bit of jitters and, and sloppiness, and we did, and we turned the puck over in front of them. So we made some big saves and kept it out of the net. And, uh, and then Pash came in halfway through the game and didn't allow a goal. So uh, they both did their job. They did what they had to do to get us a win. And um, I think they're going to be really good for us this year. They look great in practice. Their attitudes are good. They're supporting each other really well. And uh, we're, we're really pleased with where they're at. So tonight the big part is the 942 crew showing up, uh, showing their support for the hockey team. Some people did get turned away, however on a Saturday night. What are your words as far as the fan base? It was an exhibition. They showed up, they sold out the student section. Um, that's something that obviously is going to continue to come, but what are your words for them? Yeah, I mean, we obviously really appreciate their support, and we're going to continue to do everything we can, um, you know, in-game and out-of-game to reach out and, and talk to students and let them know how much we appreciate their support. And, and the turnout was incredible Saturday. We, we, were, we were really pleased with all the all the, the kids that came out and, and obviously really disappointed that so many got turned away because it was so full but um you know it, it, right now it is what it is and, and we need their support and and my advice is if you want in you better get there early and um and and that's the way it has to be until we get our new arena and their new arena is going to come and we're not going to forget about um all the the attempted support from um from, from our students that, that didn't get in. And we'll do everything we can to make it right and continue to. All right, we're gonna open up some questions from the crowd. Uh, guys, you can ask Coach uh, Powers any questions about Nate or anything going into uh, the season, so. We have a question from Facebook Live. Coach, who's your favorite NHL team? Favorite NHL team, Coach. Favorite NHL team. Uh, I grew up actually cheering for the New York Islanders. Um, and we got an Islander fan here in, in the crowd. And, um, the reason I, I always cheered for the Islanders was their farm club was in Indianapolis, where I'm from, and, and, and they were the Checkers. And my favorite player was Kelly Rudy, uh, who was their goalie and had a long career in the NHL for the Islanders and the Kings. And so I, 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 I can't say that I cheer for them uh, first and foremost anymore. I'm, I've been in Phoenix for 20 years, so I, I, I tend to pull for the Coyotes. You got a favorite college hockey team? Yeah, I think uh, I think I do. I think we all know who that is. <laughs> Any more questions from Facebook Live? Is there anybody in the audience? Is there a question about 
plan for who's going to be kind of like the number one goalie this year? So the question was who, who what the plan is to uh, figure out who our number one goalie is. Uh, we, we certainly want to establish a number one goalie, and, and um, we're we're in a unique situation in our hybrid year, and then going into our first uh, season as an NCAA team, where we had a veteran guy and a really good young guy coming in um, between all three of them, really, with Rob Levin and Ryland Pashevitz and, and Joey Decord. So it was kind of a goaltending by committee um, strategy, and, and this year, as we look to, to, to move forward and, and get some more wins as a program, well, I'm going to look to establish a number one goalie and really roll with one guy um, for the majority of the year. And, and they both know that. And um, has one of those guys stepped to the forefront just yet? Probably not. But I think one will, and, and we're well on our way to naming that guy. Uh, the freshman class you brought in, uh, you know, you speak volumes about a lot of good things. What has been your favorite thing so far about uh, this new class that um, that you brought in, I think that uh, they've just bought into to our identity. You know, our our, our captains and and the guys that were with us last year really established what our identity was at the end of the year, and it's just playing hard and heavy and fast and aggressive, and and making sure that whoever we played left the arena knowing that they played Arizona State, and uh, and these guys all have come in and and they were they were either captains versus alternate captains on, on their junior teams. Almost all of them were uh, members of a very successful organization, so they know how to win. And they, they bring a, a level of maturity uh, as a group of freshmen that really um, I'd be hard-pressed to guess that any other program has. So they've stepped right in, and, and you saw it on Saturday with how many of them contributed to that win. Johnny Walker with a goal and an assist. Jacob Wilson was arguably our best defenseman. Uh, Bunces had a goal. And then Dom Garcia, I thought, was really good too. So they all played really well, and uh, and we're really pleased with their uh, their progress so far. And speaking of guys like Johnny Walker, uh, he's got two points in that exhibition game. And you've mentioned before that you know something about this team. Uh, you know, you guys like to be a thorn in the side of some opponents. Uh, do you think uh, for uh, you know these freshmen really uh, attribute to that mo uh, that motto? Yeah, absolutely. They they uh, they're all big. They play hard. Um, they all they all fit in with we're getting served here. Uh, they all they all fit in with our our identity, and that's again that's why we recruited them. They, there's no surprises with these kids. They they were recruited here because of how well they fit in with our culture and our beliefs and um, and our roster, and and they've they've been great so far. And we got a long way to go. We're just getting started, um, but they're settling in really well. And you touched on that that stadium is coming. Uh, but you will have some games again this year played at uh, Gila River. The Coyotes doing a great job in partnership with Arizona State. And what are those games like? Are they do they have a different feel to them because they are in an NHL arena, or is it the same thing that you get when you play at Oceanside or any other road game? You know, I mean, I think it's kind of the best of both worlds. When we play at Oceanside, we're close to campus. Our student body can come and support us a lot easier, and that's really most important to us as we build this program and an affinity for our our program from a fan base standpoint. We want to reach out and get the students to support us and they do it really well at Oceanside because of how close it is. Um, but we do have three games out in Glendale at Gila River and, and um, you know the, the reasoning for going out there is, is either A, you know, the Pac-12 Network wants to air uh, uh, and broadcast one of our games which is great to get our brand out and B, it, it gives a, a professional setting which when we do have our on-campus arena um, uh, that's that's what we're going to be playing in every day. So, you know, it, it depends on on the situation. Sometimes it doesn't work out playing out there when we want to because of scheduling conflicts with the Coyotes. Um, but the breakup this year, I think, is is really good for us, and we're happy about it. A question a lot of people have that are fans of Sun Devil Hockey is: Is the day going to come sooner than later uh, where you find yourself in the conference? It will come absolutely. Um, we, we evaluate that every day. We really do. Um, it, it's not on the back burner per se, but it's certainly um, not the biggest priority for our program. We're really facility focused right now uh, from an administration standpoint. Um, and as far as I'm concerned from the head coach, like I'm focused on our guys. I'm focused on giving our guys the absolute best college hockey experience we can give them um, and, and with the resources that we have. And, and I think we do a pretty good job of that. So uh, that day will come. Any word on when the new arena is going to be ready? Got to have some inside. 
Yeah, I knew somebody would ask that. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it's uh, we're hoping soon. Um, I can't get in and divulge too much information as far as that goes. Again, the, those are really questions for our administration. I can tell, and I, I say the same thing to everybody. Um, they're working diligently every day, very hard on getting this uh, finalized and, and, and every day that we wake up we're closer to getting that done and uh, it is absolutely going to happen. All right, we got another Facebook question. What what can you do to get the student body more involved? Well I think I think we've done that. Yeah I think I think we're doing that we're doing stuff like this right now um, where we, we encourage the students to come out and and get to know us on a on a more intimate basis and and, and sit in a social setting and be able to ask us questions about the direction of our program, things like skating with the 942 crew at Oceanside we did, uh, serving pizza and, and, and delivering pizza at Camp Fargo, um, and, and going to dining halls like we did last night and sitting down and having meals with them. So we, we have a huge initiative this year to get the student body heavily involved, and um, that's not gonna stop until we, we, we absolutely know that every game whether we're at Oceanside, Gila River, or, or our new arena in a couple years, the student section is always full. All right, do you have any more questions for the crowd? Uh, who do you think is going to step up and fill the shoes left by, uh, by Algeon and uh, Murphy? All right, your question was uh, asked about Belargeon Murphy, uh, two guys that were on top of your leaderboard last year as far as the points go. Uh, and the question was regarding them and who's going to replace them and, and, and put production numbers up. It's a good question. Uh, both really good offensive players. Um, Robbie's obviously in uh, South Carolina in the East Coast League, and uh, Wade Murphy's in uh, Worcester, I believe, in the East Coast League. So um, big shoes to fill. They both scored a lot of points for us last year um, on, a, on a really young and experienced team. Um, so we'll find that out. We'll find that out shortly. I think uh, we're expecting a lot out of our top two lines. Um, and and what you saw on Saturday night in our exhibition game was a good sign. We had uh, our top line with a bunch of points. Um, you know, Walker had a goal, uh, Bushy had a goal, and Gruber had a goal. You know, and, and I think people are know what to expect out of Crost and Holman and, and, uh, and Louie. So we're, we're in good shape. Um, it's part of college hockey, turnover and, and, and figuring out how to replace guys. And, and I love those two guys very much, but I have no doubt that we're going to have guys step up and replace them. And you mentioned Coleman, Louis Rowe, uh, and Croston, they're, uh, they're back at the top of the helm there. Uh, Holman captain, and then Croston, Louis Rowe are the assistants. Um, and you commented a week ago that nothing was broken, why fix it? Uh, what have those guys provided last year and moving into this year that left them in those roles? You know, they, they just bring us so much energy, and they're good in every situation. If we need uh, to get the puck out now for the defensive draw, I can put Crow's line out, and, and they're going to do exactly what we need them to do. If we need uh, momentum and, 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 and a good shift where they're forechecking hard and keeping the puck down in the offensive zone and, and, and maybe even getting a goal for us, they can do that too. So they, they do a little bit of everything, but really what they give us is energy. They all three play the exact way that we want to play. They've helped establish our identity, they play to our identity, and the other guys follow suit. Well, we mentioned one of those guys, his name is Louis Rowe, and he's uh, one of the shortest players on your team, and he's here to join us tonight. Louis? I'll scoot over. <laughs> Alrighty, how's it going? Hey, how you doing, Louis? Big inboard. Louis, uh, just talk about uh, that win you guys got, uh, although it be an exhibition, uh, but moving into momentum going into this weekend. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it, just one of those things with NCAA, we don't get that many hours uh, with the coaches and the pucks and all that. So getting out there, getting in the game environment, getting some touches, you know, getting some real good full contact in, I think it just kind of shakes all the feathers and gets you prepared for a season. I think we handled that game perfectly. Um, obviously, there's still some things to improve on, but that's going to happen in the beginning of the season anyway. So I think uh, we're ready to go here come Friday night. And how excited are you uh, for that first actual game on Friday night? Oh, I can't wait. I've been waiting. I've been waiting since February for this. So that's that's just part of our preparation that we've just been putting in all this work and all this time. So we're we're itching to go here. And is there any any series on the schedule you see this year that you circled that you want uh, to see that team again or a team you haven't played yet? 
Uh, I mean, I think it would be nice to go back to uh, Omaha and play Nebraska and Omaha, but uh, I mean, cause I, just, I, I played there for two years with juniors and have a lot of people there that I built relationships with and whatnot, but uh, I wouldn't say any series more important than another one. I just, uh, we go into every building wanting to win, and so that's, that's our approach going on. So, Louie, right now we're looking at quite the spread of food in front of us. Nothing we can touch <laughs> quite yet, and you might be getting yourself into it. A little food eating contest here later, but what is your what is your favorite uh, meal to have uh, before a game or just on game day? Surprisingly, I'm not very superstitious about this, so uh, I switch it up. But basically, it's uh, you know chicken rice, um, eggs, potatoes, just something uh, something balanced where I get good uh, protein stores, a little bit of carbs, and meat, and some greens, but uh, I'm not very superstitious about that, so just, you know, a good, healthy, balanced meal. So obviously, other than hockey, which you support 100%, you play on the team, uh, is there any other Sun Devil athletic sport uh, that you like to go out and, and watch or follow, uh, besides hockey, obviously? Uh, I think our football games are awesome. Our, our We have one of the one of my favorite stadiums I've ever been in, and uh, I think football is pretty cool. Uh, I like volleyball. Um, so I guess the volleyball games are cool. I, I play volleyball myself, so I don't know. I'd say those two, volleyball and football. You play libero? <laughs> yeah, I, maybe not. I figured you get some Yeah, somewhere in the front. So I, I got another question. This is kind of just like a, a fan type question. If you had a choice of an alternate jersey, would you want it to be maroon or gold? Ooh. I think maroon. I think basically if you took our whites and just flipped the white and the maroon, kind of something like that, I think that would be pretty cool. But I'd have to see like a design of it to really fall in love. All right. Now let's talk about uh, that line you're on. Uh, what, what kind of chemistry do you guys have? Uh, at this point, we're, we're feeling pretty automatic. So I actually answered a question about this earlier today. It was like, how do you guys like compliment each other and just kind of like communicate? And it's like, we're, we, as sometimes, we just feel like a machine. Like, when everything's going, it's just expected out of us to do the right things, and it's just one of those things where we kind of only talk over a little minor tweaks, but besides that, we feel pretty automatic out there. Now, we asked this uh, question to Coach Powers earlier. Uh, your favorite NHL team? Ooh. Well, I grew up a Red Wings fan my whole life, but I haven't necessarily liked the direction they've gone recently. Um, coming out here, I've liked following the Yotes. Um, one of my favorite players is Milan Lucci, so I like watch. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I like the Kings too, but I think my hometown, my hometown favorite team, is probably yeah, the Red Wings. A uh, new freshman, um, you know. Obviously, Coach Powers touched on how uh, you, Holman, and Crossan have really uh, accepted them and uh, done your job as leaders. What have you seen from them uh, that you love so far? Uh, I love our freshman class. I think. I think the attitudes and the personalities of these kids are damn near perfect. Uh, I think they've all kind of fit into our culture without any hesitation and just been chomping at the bit to get going here, and that's what we love. We want guys that are energetic, that always want to be on the ice, that are, you know, are super happy to be around the boys and fit into where they are, and I think that they've been perfect. And what are the responsibilities that you feel that you have being a captain? Uh, I just I just like to lead by example, and then um, w when I can, you know, give advice, hold people accountable, that kind of thing. But uh, the, for the most part, I want to do the right things, and I want to be a I want to be a role model, especially for our young guys coming in. So that's kind of how I take my uh, captain, my leadership role. You know, Amherst coming in uh, this weekend on your home ice. Is there any uh, series? Could be that one or anyone uh, down the road that you are looking absolutely forward to. Uh, I mean, obviously this one, for the first series is always huge, and uh, we haven't played in so long, so in the moment right now, i got to say I'm most excited for Friday night, but uh, other, other than that, um, I, yeah, I can't, we'll see there, we'll see when we get there. So. And what's, what's one of them, if you have one, an embarrassing moment you have of Coach Powers, whether he uh, fell or something, <laughs> just something oh, embarrassing? Yeah. I remember we had a we had a practice. It was a day after one of our um, one of our punishment skates, and uh, coach was I don't know if he was still rattled or what was going on, but he had something going on in his head, and he walked out on the ice with his skate guards on and took a tumble. So we all we all got a good laugh out of that.
you know, we spoke about the freshman class, and is there any and, and towards uh, you know Johnny Walker, a big part of that freshman class? Is there any, does anyone give him whiskey jokes because he's named after a famous whiskey, or is that is that just the thing that the fans like to joke about? Uh, that, yeah, that must be a fan thing. Um, I mean, I, it is a pretty funny correlation, but uh, I don't know. Maybe he's one of the only guys on the team that can afford it. But <laughs> other than that, no, we we keep it pretty clean in the locker room. But uh, anytime we can give him some crap, we will. So I'll keep that one in the bag. Yeah, no, for sure. And burgers have showed up for the uh, hamburger eating contest. I believe it's going to be you versus Coach Powers, and we have a. Uh, RJ, RJ's going to be the Islanders fan. So it's you against two uh, two Islanders fans, Louis. Yeah, ganged up on. Coach did say you're going to have to skate about 30 minutes after eating this. So yeah, the funny thing is I got a I got a body count tomorrow, so we'll see how this helps me out. <laughs> All right, come on over. <laughs> You guys got to be the judge, right? Hey, what, what do we got? Be the judge. Oh, Coach, what do we got on this burger? There's no it's way a I'm full here. burger. It's uh, it's it's got everything: lettuce, tomato, cheese, mustard. Zero. Not a mustard, mustard fan. I'm not a mustard I'm fan. Not, I'm not a mustard fan either, or a oh. tomato fan. So Louis gonna put this down though. This is gonna be tough. <laughs> Are we gonna count Tell down us here? Tell to go. Hey, if if RJ wins, he wins a signed stick. Hey, if RJ wins, he gets this hockey stick right here. Signed by the team and Coach Powers. So, on the count of five, four, three, two, one, eat up. And they're off to the races. Louis Rowe looks to be having the lead right now. Coach Greg Powers is not doing very well. He's struggling. He has his skate guards on, folks. RJ, putting it down. You know, for a guy who doesn't like onions or mustard, doing a great job. I think he's got the motto of just get it down quick because I don't like the taste. Hey, good burger though? Quality? <laughs> you guys look like you're enjoying it too much. This isn't a, this isn't a speed contest at all. free dinner out of it. RJ, this stick is yours if you can eat a little faster, but it looks like it's going to be played in Friday night's game by Louie. All right, who do you think is going to win right now, halfway through? Make bets, make bets. Louie. Everyone's saying Louie. Coach. RJ, you're struggling there, eh? Oh, no. Wait, Coach Powers. Has taken the lead, folks. Wait, run. The silencer. Oh no! Look at this. Oh! oh. Down to the wire. Uh -oh. Oh. Oh, you gotta finish it. He's got completely oh. swallowed, folks. Looks like RJ is gonna sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of this dinner. <laughs> you gotta eat all the onions, Coach. Everything's gotta go. I'm sorry. And the winner is. Oh, not yet. There it is. Oh! The first ever hamburger eating contest here at Hell Frozen Over goes to Coach Powers. RJ, you did good, though. I'm still going to give you that stick. Oh, thank you. You can eat half your burger. <laughs> Got some burger grease on the stick. Can I give it to RJ or one of you guys? <laughs> you go. RJ. There you go, RJ. By the way, RJ. I enjoy the rest of the burger though. He's got half of it left. Oh man. He finished it. Oh yeah. I got to the onions and the tomatoes and I was like. Hey. Hey, what a contest that was though, right? Louie, how was the burger besides the uh, onions, the pickles, the tomatoes, everything you don't like besides the meat? You know what? Despite all of that, it was still a good burger. Coach, what do you think? Uh, it was a great burger. Thanks, Petal House, for, uh, for providing it. Shout out to Petal House for the wonderful spread of food they provided us tonight.
as well as those burgers that lasted about a minute and a half for some people. Hey, but moving into this weekend, uh, if you don't have that burger still in you by Friday night, uh, UMass Amherst is coming into town. The first ever uh, program sweep uh, that happened last year. You guys won 4-1, uh, both games on their home ice. Uh, talk about the team that is coming in tomorrow night. Obviously a lot different than last year. Yeah, they're a lot different. I mean, they, they you know, anytime you add the fourth overall pick in the NHL and then the second rounder in any recruiting class in college hockey, that you're going to instantly become very competitive and, and a threat to beat anybody on any given night. <laughs> they're already a pretty good team, um, but, but it's not even just those two. Um, they brought in a ton of really good uh, recruits. So, you know, their recruiting class is top five in the country. Um, they're going to be young, but they're going to be fast and, and um, hungry and aggressive and completely bought into what their coach is preaching. And uh, we're going to have to be very good to be able to, to, to get a win or two. And, Louie, what are you, uh, you and the captain squad preaching to this, uh, this team going into Friday's uh, opening matchup? Yeah, we're kind of we're in the same boat. Uh, we're not trying to focus on our opponent. Obviously, uh, we can't underestimate them because they've made a ton of improvement in this postseason. But uh, we play our game and we play the best that we can. Then uh, I like our odds here, so that's our focus. You're starting fast at home, uh, then you're on the road for the rest of October, three weekends in a row. Um, how important is it to uh, pick up some wins here at home uh, while you're here? I mean, we want to play downhill. We want to play downhill all season and, and, and try and take care of Friday night no matter where we play. But um, the fact that we have three trips back to back to back right after this home slate against UMass, um, you know, these are important. We, we, uh, we know the, the importance of taking care of home ice, and, and that's why we're doing things like this, to make sure that the students and everybody comes out to support us. Yeah, home crowd, uh, student section obviously. Uh, going to come out and support the 942 crew, obviously, here uh, in full force. They'll be there full force for sure. Hopefully no one gets turned away, though. Uh, but, uh, Louie, how, how important is it, uh, you know, what's the morale with you guys when you see, uh, when you skate onto the ice and you see a full student section there, uh, you know, 30, 45 minutes before the game even drop, uh, puck drops? Uh, yeah, we love that, and uh, we thank all of them for coming out, and we, we wish we could get more of them in there, but it is what it is right now, and uh, we make sure when we go out on campus and we see people and we ask them, you know, did they watch the game, have they been to the games, if they were turned down, that we still make sure that we show that support to them and uh, make sure that they're still kind of part of this whole thing we got going on here. So uh, we love that support, and when we go out on the ice and see those guys, especially that big flag we saw last time, that just it gives you chills. So. We're very thankful. Coach, you know, we talked about last week and we talked about it a little tonight, the goaltenders. You're still not going to give us any word on who's between the pipes Friday night? You'll find out when they do. All right. Thanks, Sundo Athletics, Pedal House, Coach Powers, Louis Rowe, 942 crew. Uh, thanks for coming out. We'll see you this weekend. Puck drop 7.05 at Oceanside Ice Arena off McClintock Drive in Tempe. Make sure you're there. Uh, Sun Devils are going to go three weekends away from home after this weekend. So good luck to you guys this season. Some exciting stuff, exciting program up and coming. Uh, and we'll see you later. Thank you, guys.